Hello and welcome to this episode of MyAmpTutor TV. This week we're going to be looking at chromatic aberration and colour fringing. Now to the average user or photographer this probably doesn't pay much interest to you, to, but to those professionals out there or those people who are after get, getting a perfect picture chromatic aberration can be a bit of a headache. If you really want to know I suggest you do a Google search for chromatic aberration but I'll try and sum it up in a nutshell. Well, Chromatic aberration occurs for converging lenses in a camera and the aberration arises because the index of refraction of the lenses material varies with wavelength and therefore the colors of the light passing through the lens refract by different amounts and produce essentially a blurred image or an image that appears offset, certain colors will be offset from the sort of main image. The aberration is representative of the phenomenon of dispersion. So with this little diagram demonstrating how that sort of works, let's get into the nuts and bolts. I'm here in Adobe Bridge. I'm going to show you a couple of images uh, of uh, this beautiful castle I took in an area called Dartmouth in England and on first appearances they look okay but if we zoom in on them uh, like we're going to do in a second you'll see that there are some irregularities there is some chromatic aberration and color fringing we're going to start off with this uh, one here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the image selected and then I'm going to right click and click open in camera raw now camera raw opens up and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to draw a marquee around this area here and maybe just zoom in just a little bit closer and as I do that you can see there's this blue fringe to the edge of the building here and that is chromatic aberration now we could fix this very easily in camera raw by coming over to the uh, tab here for lens corrections and then under the color tab just click in the checkbox for remove chromatic aberration and bang it goes now this is a perfect example of how we can use that tool but it doesn't always work sometimes we have to do something a little bit more now this image hasn't really got areas where that doesn't work so I'm just going to click cancel here and then I'm going to scroll down to this image here and once again I'm going to right click and open in camera raw and the resulting image that opens up I'm going to zoom in on this cannon down here in this bottom part of the image and I'm going to zoom in even more and you can see we've got some quite uh, prominent color fringing and chromatic aberration and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the uh, normal basic uh, tab here in camera raw and I'm going to pump up the vibrance all the way to its maximum of 100 and the saturation as well all the way up to really over exaggerate this uh, color fringing or chromatic aberration uh, problem we got here so let's go over to the lens corrections tab here and first of all what I'm going to do is I'm just going to enable lens profile correction click on that and you can see it comes in and tells me uh, my camera here and it adjusts it accordingly and then I'm going to go over to the color tab here and first things first I'm going to check the box for remove chromatic aberrations and see what that does well it gets rid of a fair amount of it but you can see and I'm going to zoom in even closer now to these areas here where you can definitely see a red fringe or a purpley magenta fringe and even a bluey green tinge around here now we're going to use these sliders here to try and mitigate these uh, color fringing effects we see here. Now we've got four sliders here. Now the first slider is the purple amount and underneath that is sort of a bracketing uh, slider allows us to determine what uh, we can classify as purple amount or the, the amount uh, that we want to mitigate from the image and conversely below that we have a green amount and then the green hue slide is here so we can determine what we class as a green hue so first things first let's work from the top here and if we start sliding this purple amount 
off to the side you'll see and let's just look down the bottom here of this image as I move this all the way up you can see it starts to go and we get to about 10 it's virtually gone from the bottom here we've still got on the top here uh, and we need to just adjust these parameters in here to try and get rid of that and as we nudge this up to the more red colors because you can see this is definitely more red as we bump it up you can see it goes now we have got this uh, green tinge here and a few areas so let's see how we can get rid of that let's pump this up and well I'm moving the green up but nothing seems to be happening which suggests to me this isn't actually green in any way it's more blue so let's have a look at the blue here and as we pump this down you can see we we, in, we start to lose the actual blue in the image so we just want to go to the point where we're not losing part of the image and then let's have a look up here that's having a little bit of effect and those are probably about the levels that we want here and as we pump this up now the green amount you can see we've definitely got rid of the green tinge we had up here now this is an extreme case because of course we've got the vibrance pumped up to 100 and the saturation so I'm just going to bring these back down now. I'm going to have the vibrance set to about 40. That may seem still a bit high, but uh, the image I think needs it. And then I'm going to leave the saturation at about 20. And then let's just zoom out here. And as I zoom out, you can see, well, I've definitely got uh, the chromatic aberration color fringing completely gone. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save this image as it is. I'm going to save it in my options here in the project files folder of this here and I'm going to begin numbering this at 1 and I'm going to save this as a DNG file and then I'm going to click save Then I'm going to click cancel and then I'm going to right click in the image click open in camera raw I'm not going to touch anything in here so of course the only thing I am going to touch to ensure that our image looks the same is enable the lens profile corrections I'm going to leave everything here at its default and then I'm going to click open image and this opens up in Photoshop I'm just going to click OK. I'm just going to maximize Photoshop here. I'm also going to open up the previous image that I had. Let's go to File, Open, and then a dialog box that comes up. I'm going to open the file that we saved earlier, the DNG file, and click Open. It comes in once again as a camera raw, and I can just click Open Image. and click OK. I'm just going to close this image down here and these two images that are open I'm going to go up to Window, Arrange, 2 up vertical so now I've got two images in here and I'm going to select on this one here and we can tell it's the selected one because it goes a lighter grey the tab I'm going to press Control O and then using the zoom tool here which we can use the keyboard shortcut of Z or Z and I'm going to zoom in on the area just down here well this is the original image and there you go there's the example this is the exact same portion of the image perhaps this one zoomed in a little bit more so let's just put this to 200 percent like the other side and there you go you can see we've completely removed the chromatic aberration and color fringing from the image